All right. Once again, we want to welcome everybody to the RBBS Logistics Learning Center's freight agent, freight broker, freight forwarding, freight dispatcher training. Uh, every week we have training, uh, usually the same back town, same back time. And today we are going to talk about uh, what's on the horizon. What do we have that's new that's coming up for this year? This is 2018, brand new year, brand new start. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff that we're going to be adding that's going to help our students make a lot of money and get them off to a, a good start this year. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start sharing our screen so you all can see what we see. Get that taken care of. All right. Great. Now, everybody can see what we see. Our screen is now being shared. I want to welcome everybody to the RBBS Logistics Center. Um, freight agent, freight broker, freight dispatcher training for this week. Um, if you haven't muted yourself, please make sure you, your, your, your phones are muted so you don't have that background noise. Today, we are going to be going over what's new for, for this year, okay, because this is our first training session for the 2018. My God, time is flying by. I don't know how many of y'all thought y'all would still be here in 2018, but I'm glad I am still here. But here we are. It's 2018, um, new year, new day. So let's make some new money. We're going to show you all some things that we got coming up. Um, real quick, we are going to be going into auto hauling this year. Okay, I'm going to, we're going to go over how, to, how you all can get into the auto hauling business and, show, and train you on how to how to navigate that system because that is a totally, totally. That's like a that's, that's really like a business all to itself, and to be honest with you. And the place that you're going to be doing that is here, um, a place called centraldispatch.com. That's a, that is the place where you we're going to be finding your your loads and posting your loads and stuff when it comes to the auto hauling. Uh, auto hauling is a is a separate separate entity all by itself. As you notice, they have their own load board. Um, and this is their own. This is the load board that you operate on. We're doing auto hauling. You can also operate on U ship, but I wouldn't recommend U ship. U ship is more of a privatized type of load board, and it's for people that go in there and they just, and they just post stuff on. And everybody tries to get the lowest bid, so it's you're in that just truly, truly, truly bidding war when you're on U ship. But we're gonna get back to this here. Um, a little bit later on as we go into explaining to you what we're going to be doing and how you all are going to be operating on on Central Dispatch. Another thing, <clears throat> some new changes that we're going to be coming up with. Today, um session is not going to be that long because we're actually going to be changing our schedule. Now, when we change our schedule, we are not going to broadcast that to the public. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, we're not going to broadcast to the public. We've got some calls from some of our shippers. that They've gotten some prank phone calls. So, uh, and I don't know if it's coming from people who are with within our with with in our structure, or people who are listening to our or watching our videos and watching our broadcast, and then learning who our shippers are and learning who our customers are, and then going to them and then doing prank phone calls. Okay, um, that's bad business. I don't do that. I don't. I don't. I don't call other. Uh, freight agents, or dispatchers, or brokers, shippers, or their clientele, and prank phone call them or try to throw salt on other companies. I'm not. I'm never gonna drop. I, I'm never. I, I. I am never gonna drop that low. And I want to encourage you all to, when you start your own business, not to go that low either. Because when you stoop that low, that says a lot about who you are, and it says a lot about. How? Because if you were doing business, if you were doing business and taking care of business, you wouldn't have time to go and and stoop that low to do those types of things. Uh, we've had a couple of, of our clients, our shippers, have actually called me and told me that they've had some prank phone calls. And I'll tell you about one of them. One of them called our shipper down in Tampa, and they told our shipper down in Tampa that um, they ran a load for Tampa International. They ran a load for Tampa and. They ran it through RBBS. Okay, so Tampa International asked them, what's your load number? They couldn't give them a load number. So Tampa said, no problem. What date did you run the load? They gave them a date. Tampa looked up the date and said, well, no, nah, we didn't have any loads that we ran by RBBS during that date. 
well, what's your what's your your company's name and your phone number? And then they hung up. <laughs> and so so and so Tampa just kind of you know they called me up and said, look, we've gotten a a few crank phone calls and and that's bad business. Okay, that is really really bad business, and we don't practice that way. We don't do that. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that. And if it's if it's coming from the outside, that's fine. All that means is we will no longer be broadcasting our live training to the public. We'll broadcast maybe the first five or ten minutes of it, and then the rest of it, everyone else will have to get if they come in and if they enroll in our program. I hate to do that because I get tons and tons and tons of messages and emails from individuals thanking us for broadcasting what we broadcast because they learn a lot even though it's not in our program. I've had 15 email messages and about 20 different phone calls from individuals that called me up on a daily basis to say, you know, I took this you know, freight broker program and it cost me $2,500 and didn't learn a thing. And I learned more from one of you all free videos, one of you all's free videos than I learned from this $2,500 course that I took. Okay. And, and that's the bad part about it. I hate to cut those people off because of what a few people are doing, but that is just the, that's just the the reality of what we deal with when you start making moves, when you start doing things. And you all will experience this when you start your own business. When you go into your own business, you realize that this is a cutthroat business. You realize that this is a cutthroat business. You have to watch your back. You have to kind of look around the corners and see who's coming for you because this is a cutthroat business, okay? And people will do all types of things to try and 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 make business bad for you. And and what they don't realize is business is not going to get any better for, for them because their attitude, their how what they're doing and how they're doing in business is a direct reflection in their in their attitude and in their ethical parameters. If they have no type. So bad school guidelines, they're never going to make money in business because people are going to see right through it. And that's just how it is. Okay? But um, we're going to move on from that. Um, also, I want to, make, want to let everybody know that we are, um, you know, looking into what we're doing, how we're doing it, and we're always trying to make it better. Okay? All right. With that being said, with that being said, you all have noticed that our dispatch agreement has changed. Okay? We have a new dispatch agreement. And we have a new carrier agreement. And let's show you all our new approved dispatch agreement and carrier agreement. This is our new and improved ba -ba -ba -da -ba, broker, dispatcher, uh, and carrier, uh, contract carrier agreement. You'll notice here we redesigned our, the carrier agreements and the dispatch agreement to where you all can actually put your information into the broker or dispatcher spot. And on the dispatch agreement, you all can now put your information because our program is geared towards helping you all build your book of business. You get a book to build a book of business. That's not, what we're here. That's not why we're here. We're here to assist you in building your book of business. So we redesign all of our forms and all of our agreements so that you can place your information there, your company's name, your name. If you don't have a company name, just put your name in there, okay? Uh, if you're going to become a full-fledged broker, and when you get your uh, MC number and your DOT number, you can put your MC number in. All the agreements are already completely filled out. They're completely done. All you've got to do is just plug in your information. That way, you won't have to go and rewrite all of these contracts when you're ready to start your own business. When you're ready to break off on your own and start your own dispatching firm or your own brokerage firm or your own freight forwarding firm, firm, we supply you with all of the contracts and all of your agreements. That's one of the things that we provide for you at our cost. We supply you with all of this. We've already done all. We've already had an attorney to go through and fill and, and complete these agreements. All the legal jargon, everything is in where it needs to be, how it's supposed to be, exactly how it should be. Okay, these are perfectly filled out and, and formatted agreements and contracts, and these are for you all. So all you all have to do is when you pull one of these up, if you're going to become a full-fledged broker, this is the agreement you would use to onboard carriers. You can also use this agreement 
as a dispatcher to onboard carriers too if you want to. But in actuality, all you really need as a dispatching firm to bring carriers on is your dispatch agreement. But if you want to sign them to a more binding contract, you can use this contract as well. That's why it's broker slash dispatchers. Okay? And as you can see here, we've highlighted the areas of where you needed to put your name in at. And then you can go in and, you know, and, and have them to put in their MC number and stuff and all the other stuff that you need to put in. But it's already completely filled out for you. All you got to do is just plug the information in, run down to the bottom, sign it, put your information in there, put your signature on it, bam, 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 and you're good to go with that. All right? So that is the, um, the new um, carrier agreement that we have for you all um, if you all need it. It will be available on the website. It will be available. Um, we're going to be sending it out on our Facebook um, chat group too as well. And we're going to be sending it out by email to all of you. Okay? And we also have bah, 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 the new dispatch agreement. And this is our new dispatch agreement, as you can see here. Some, some of you already have it. Some of you who are, who are in the chat group, you've already seen this and you have it. But if you don't have it, this is it. Uh, we're going to be loading up on the website, and you also you all you all are also going to notice some changes on our website. Our website is going to be changing. We're going to be making some changes on our website. The layout is going to be changing, and we're going to be changing some of the verbiage on our website to reflect our our new and upgraded direction that we're going to be going in. Um, hold on here. Todd is messaging me. What Todd is probably having some trouble getting on. Let's see what Todd is saying. I'm training today. Yes, Todd, you are. What's going on now? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's get back. All right. Back to our dispatch agreement. Okay, but this is the new dispatch agreement. <clears throat> you notice all you got to do is just plug in your name, your address, your phone number, your, your email address. Your information goes up here. If you have a logo, just add it on here. Okay, you don't need it, but if you have a logo, you add it on here. Your information goes up there. Down here, you notice here we have it highlighted where your information goes. Uh, we try to make this very easy for you. We highlight areas of where your information goes. Uh, make sure you read it just in case you find another area where your information needs to go that we haven't hot that we haven't um, highlighted. And down here, of course, you know um, your signature goes here where it says dispatcher, and your your name and signature goes here, and the person you carry his name and information goes up here. And this is up here is where bah, 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 the carrier fills this out, you know, uh, that section right there. But make sure you read this, though. Just go and plug your name in there. Read it. So the carrier puts the information in there. And we are still doing your processing until you break off from us. And then when you break off from us, we can change this to however you want to do your process. But right now, we are still doing your processing for you and and sending out the 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 electronic invoice so they can pay by clicking on and pay with a credit or debit card. So, but all of this is in an effort to help you all build your book of business because you're not here to build our book of business. Okay? Let's get that straight. You all are not here to build our book of business. You all are here to build your book of, your book of business and it is our commitment to assist you and help you to do that. So, and this is what we're doing to um, uh, facilitate that even more. Okay? One moment. One of the other two things that we are doing. <clears throat> Let's see here if anybody's got any questions. Ba -ba -ba -ba. If some of you join us late, don't worry about it. This portion is still being recorded and will be available to you. Um, it, we will make it available to you on our uh, website and on our chat groups and things like that. And I'll send it to you all by email. Okay? Um, ba -ba -ba. Other new things that we have going on. Okay. Calvin, I got a quick question. Uh, sure. That 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 dispatch, that dispatch agreement right there. Uh, would you say that that is what you would say the basic format of a dispatch agreement? Um, you know, like yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's it's the exact same as our other dispatch agreement. The only difference is. The headings and stuff, we left it blank so that you all can make use of it. Okay, we just left the areas blank so you all can plug in your name. Because so normally our name would be in here. But then we, when we were reevaluating everything, we realized, okay, we're not here to build our business. 
we had to build your business. And if the if the if the carriers are signing a dispatch agreement with our name on it, that carrier is really signing up with us. You understand what I'm saying? And that's not what we want. We want those carriers to be your clients. So when you bring on a carrier, we want that cl we want that that carrier to be obligated to you, not to us. So we want you to have something in writing, some type of contract that you have with that carrier that ties that carrier to you. So when you do go to low board, you want to sign up for other low boards, you have an agreement with your information on it and your carrier's information on it. Okay? Real quick. Um, okay, so um, a book of business, um, when you put a book of business together, what it should look like, um, this is my own personal from, from you know, this week. Um, instead of having to hand write everything down in a notebook or something, a no, book of agreement. A book of business is just a term. A book of business is just, a, right. just another term for your. I mean, a book, a book of business. I mean, a book of business is what I'm trying to say. Um, in other words, how do we build that book of business? What I'm trying to say is that okay, we get a binder and the dispatch agreement, the load confirmation. All the paperwork that's involved in that particular move with that particular no, carrier no, and that no, shipper? No, 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 no. See, you're making too much out of it. A book okay. of business is just another word for your clientele. That's it. If you call up a carrier, right, and, and you go to one, two, three, low board, you go to one of the low boards, whatever, whatever, and you contact one of the carriers, and you're saying to the carrier, say, hey, look, <clears throat> here's what I do. My job is to find you the loads that you need to move your truck because not every carrier can move their truck um, for the same amount of money as all the carriers can. Every carrier is yeah. different. If you tell me, what, what amount of money do you need to move your truck? And that carrier may say, well, I need $2.65 um, per mile to, to move my truck. And, you, and then you'll say to that carrier, well, great. Here's, here's, here's what I do. I will look for loads, and only for loads that are paying $2.65 um, per mile, and I only call you with a load that's paying two sixty five per mile or better. Those are the only loads I will present to you. Does that sound good to you? And if he says yes, great. Let me send you over my dispatch agreement. Send him over dispatch agreement. He signs it. Guess what? You just added a client to your book of business because that is now your client. That's basically what a book of business is. Now, how you want to keep track of that is on you. What I suggest you do is this. Get some type of TMS system. Or, like you said, have your ledger. You know, I would do it electronically. I would make the, an electronic file to where every carrier that I am dispatching for, I am putting all of the information on an electronic file. I'm putting in their carrier's name, their MC number, their DOT number, their phone number, their email address, and their fax number. And All of vital and a profile of what type of carrier they are. Is there a flatbed, a reefer, dry van, auto haul, or whatever the case may be? What size trailer they have? How much weight they pull, and things like that. Okay, okay. keep a log uh, of that. And then when you add a shipper, you do the exact same thing. All a book of business is is just a term that the industry uses, like it's just saying your clientele. Right. Well, the reason the reason why I ask this is because okay, like when when we get ready to make that move, when we get comfortable and say okay, I'm gonna step out on my own. Uh, however, you step out on your own. Um, when going to look for a job and doing this, this is what they say. Okay, um, the conclusion is they they want you to have a book of business. That's your proof that states that you know how to do this job. Um, the reason, right now, the reason why I'm asking this question is because like okay. Um, how do you show an employer a book, a physical book of business? In other words, like you said, a, a TMS uh, pro program. Um, okay, what I'm saying is, like, let's let's say, like, I get ready to step out and I go to uh, one of these companies that are taking on agents, you know, to work from home. Okay, and they're gonna say, okay, well, China, that's see your book of business. Okay, now, how do I go in? Expose my book of business to them if everything is on a TMS system. You understand what I'm saying? 
just show them your TMS system. Okay. If you got a TMS well, system, you can pull it. Hold, hold, let me tell you something. If you got TMS system, all you got to do is just pull it out. You all right. All so, you okay. Okay, but she, oh, my, my, okay, okay. Hold on. Slow down. And you just might learn something. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a TMS system. I'm pulling one up right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pulls up here quick enough. Blah, 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 blah. <coughs> uh, your TMS system is a system that you that you to keep track of all your business. It also helps you to verify all have their proper inspections and everything else you do. You can also track your loads in your TMS system. Okay, if you have a good TMS system. Uh, see, my internet out here is running. What is going on with my internet? Doesn't want to pull up. Your signal is fading too, just to let you know. I know. Yeah, it's just cold weather. It gets so cold. I mean, we're not used to this type of weather. All of our, uh, the internet and stuff is not underground. I'm like it is up in the north. Everything is, you know, up above ground. Up in the air. <laughs> it's this cold. Things don't work right. <laughs> them lines, them lines start freezing. I know. Things just don't work right. Okay, let me pull this up here. All right. All right. This is a. It's a TMS system. This one is, uh, we're not running that fast today for some reason. <laughs> but, but it'll pull up here in a second and I'll show it to you. Um, and this keeps track of all your business. It keep, not only does it keep track of your business, it keeps track, it keep track of your financials. It keeps track of how much money you're earning. Whole nine yards. It's all right in here. Okay? If you've got a good TMS system, this is how you keep track of your so your earnings and your money, it shows, it shows, it shows everything. You go to your dashboard, you can show them, you can pull up your customers, um, you can pull up your carriers, and say, okay, these are my carriers, uh, you know, these are all our carriers that we have, and it shows you who your approved carriers are, and as you see, we have quite a lot of carriers, and we've been doing business now for about two years, and we've got eh, several rows of carriers, but it shows you all your carriers, Oh, nine yards. You can click on one of the carriers, pulls it up, shows you who the carriers are, how you pay them, checks payable to, whatever the case may be. Shows you all the inspections that the carriers um, has had, uh, how many trucks that carrier has. You know, all, whole nine yards. If you want to pull up the financials, you can go down here to your financials on the accounting. You can pull up your your you can pull up um, your accounting, um, your 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 AP reports. Showing you all the money you got in the system, you know. So this is how. I mean, if you guys have a good, if you guys have a TMS system. Your book of business should already be formatted for you, and this is how you show those other brokerage firms what you're doing. Now, here is my thing. I'm gonna tell you this. I would you all. I wouldn't go with another brokerage firm. Okay. No. Now, I'm gonna, now, 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 now I'm gonna tell you something. I'm going to tell you something that no other brokerage firm is going to tell you. And this is why a lot of other brokerage firms don't like us. But, you know, I don't care. Because <laughs> my job is not to just tell you, of course, my job is to consult you, is to consult with you and give you the best advice that I think you need to know to be successful in this business. Okay? What other business... What other what other business out there? And some of you don't get offended now, but 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 we all grown ups here. There's another business that closely resembles the same format as what these large brokerage firms do. Because when you go to a brokerage firm, they're already you know they're a big large brokerage firm. You're already doing business. You already have your clientele, right? Right? Okay. You already right. have your clientele. You already have your clientele. You have your strippers. You have your carriers. You're making money. You're dispatching these carriers every day, every week. You're making money already, and you're getting 100% of your money. Now, this broker sees you, 
he says to you, he says, hey, I see what you're doing. You know, you're doing good, but I can make you better. Come on, come on with me, okay? Let me take care of your money, and I'll pay you 70%. But I'm going to take you to a whole new level because I like what you're doing. You got a lot going on, but I'm going to take you to a whole other level. Now, can any of you, can anybody tell me what other business operates like that? One is still. What? Huh? Can you say that again, young lady? Can anybody tell me what other business operates like that? I said one is still. That's going to that's gonna let you build, but they gonna, they're not going to let you take nothing with you. All right. I'm so she you, said one is still, not build. I'm, I'm going to tell you what other business operates like that. The pimping. 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 <laughs> The pimp I mean, game. I'm just, being, I'm, just being, I'm just being real with you. Pimping that easy. But, but that's how it's done. A, a pimp sees a young lady. She's out there working the street. She's doing her thing. She's looking good. She got. Uh, just anybody that sees the potential in somebody and know how to exploit them. That's exactly. what you think. Exactly. Right. I understand. So, so I mean, because that's exactly what pimps do. They look at a. Got a young lady. They see her. She's out there. She's doing her business. She got her own clientele. She's doing good, right? She's doing good. The pimp sees that. He's got his flashy cars, flashy clothes, flashy ring. He goes to her. He says, "Hey, young lady, I see you. you know, you're looking good. You're looking great. You know, you got it going on. But I can make you better. Let me take care of your money. Come over with me. Ride with me. I'll take care of all your money, and I'll break you off some every now and then. But somehow or another, that's gonna make her better. Does that make sense to you? No." I mean, pardon me for being so real, yeah, but, but, but let's face it, that's, that's the game that we're in, that's okay? Not, Does that yeah. make sense to you? What, wouldn't it make more yeah. sense to you to stay independent? And yeah. Your own well, see, that, that was the reason for me asking that, that whole question right now because, um, okay, when I first got into this, yeah, I was all gun ho oh, yeah, I'm going to be a broker and, uh, you know, go get all of this and, you know, Get all the money, not just get some of the money, get all the money. And then I started looking further into it and the responsibility. No, that's not going to work. You know, well, you look a little bit deeper. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be a, but you don't have to be a broker. Right. Yeah, I understand that now from, from what you taught me and what you showed me. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm at the conclusion of, yeah, I don't want to be nothing else but a dispatcher. It, it doesn't make any sense to move ahead. Somebody like me, myself. You know, everybody's different. But from the way I see things, it's best for me to sit back and be a dispatcher and, you know, just dispatch because yeah. I'm in control of my business. I'm in yeah. control of my money. Yeah, and that's the decision that each one of you are going to have to make at some point in time, okay, because there are advantages to being a broker. I'm not going to say that there are not any advantages to do it. There are advantages to being a broker, but only if you have the means to become a broker, okay, because... Right, and there are some disadvantages to, 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 to being a broker. Being a broker. Right. We started out. We, we started out. We started out as full fledged brokers, but we only did that because we had the financial backing to help us get started right. as a full fledged broker. Because we started out, you know, I went to some investors. I pitched what we to them. They liked it. They came on board. They put up the money, and that's how we. But well, we started out full fledged broker. The bond. The two point five million dollars of insurance uh, to, to to cover the freight, the authority, the MC number, the whole nine yards, the the CNTMS systems. You know, we got every, I mean, we got everything. The toll free numbers. They had a website built. I mean, we had it all one shot. Bam, we full fledged brokers. Okay, but there's the monthly fees come with being a full fledged broker. So I'm gonna tell y'all right now, as a full, uh, if someone please meet your mic. Someone needs to meet their Yo. mic. Someone's mic is not muted. Okay, there we go. As a full fledged broker, I'm going to tell y'all right now, our monthly fees were close to about $2,300 a month as a full fledged broker. Okay, that, that, those were our monthly fees. As a dispatching firm, as a dispatching firm, our monthly fees associated with actual just dispatching. Is probably about six hundred dollars a month. Now, 
we have more fees than that because we're doing the training and the you know uh, the consulting and stuff like that because we got other stuff that we pay for to with the resources that we provide for you all, like the low boards and all the other stuff that we have access to and everything else that we give access to. So our monthly fees com com combined with what we do on just the dispatching and on the training still don't equal up to what it was for us to be a broker. Now, as a broker, you do control all the money. That's one advantage of being a broker. The money has to come through you. Which means, but you are taking responsibility for all of the freight. You are you you're liable for all the freight. Your insurance has to cover the freight. Your authority has to cover that freight. Even though the carrier has to have insurance and authority too. So it's kind of like a uh, double-edged sword. Why would you need both of you all to cover that freight if only one coverage is needed? And that's and that's the dilemma with becoming a broker. But you do get to control the money because when the shipper pays, the money comes to you first, and then you pay the carriers, you pay the agents. But all the money's got to come through you. Versus as a dispatcher, you don't have the liability, you don't have the insurance, you don't need the insurance, you don't even have to have it. You don't need an authority, you don't have to have it. You don't need a bond, you don't have to have it. Now, it may be good to go ahead and get your authority, but you don't need it. Okay? What, what's, need what's, it. What's, the, what's the disadvantages? Okay, like me, for instance, like I just said. You know, it's, yeah. If you let me finish, you'll hear what I got to say. The disadvantages okay. of being a dispatcher is that you don't control the money, which means because everything is on the carrier. You just represent the carrier. You work for the carrier. You have a contract with the carrier, but you have no liability, okay? The carrier has all the liability. So, therefore, the carrier gets paid, and then the carrier pays you. So, you got to wait for the carrier to pay you. We're dealing with a situation right now where we got a carrier that, that don't want to pay us. And we're going to have to report them to DOT and the Federal Motor Carrier Association. Right, Tony? I don't know if Tony's on here or not, but uh, Tony. Yeah, I'm here. Deal. Okay, great. All right. And Tony knows exactly what I'm saying. We're dealing with a carrier now. Call the carrier this morning. He's already about what? About three weeks later? Um, yeah. Um, Tony? Yeah. And he, owes, and he owes us what? Like uh, $500? $500. Yeah, he owes us 500 bucks on two on two loads that we ran that paid him uh, $2,500. $2,500 apiece. On, on each load. Call him. We send him the invoices. He's ignoring the invoices. We call him up. Called him up, and the first thing he says when he picks up the phone is, "You have the wrong number." He hasn't even heard what I got the wrong number. <laughs> is that the same one that y'all had problems with when he tried to 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 play with the money, like short him a load? No, we got no, we got paid from that carry. We finally got his money. That was one we had with um, I think that was was that Richard Stevens. I can't think of who had that load, but but, but we got that money from him. We we finally got our money from him, but this carrier here, but we had to, but we also had to threaten him with going to the Federal Motor Carrier Association and filing a claim against him too, and that's how we got our money from him. But this is this, that's the the November or that's the decision, one of the decisions that you all will have to make. Do you want to deal with the liability and the financial responsibility and the financial obligation of being a broker, but you control the money? Or do you want to not have the liability and not have all the financial obligations, but you don't control the money? So it's six in one hand, half the other in the other one. And you all are going to have to decide at some point in time which one of these can I deal with better. Now, don't get me wrong. The majority of the carriers you deal with, they're going to pay you on time. I mean, they're, not going to, they're not out to share you. But you are going to run into, I'm not going to make this sound like it's all peaches and cream, but you are going to run into those carriers that just don't want to pay you. They're going to try, they're going to try and stick you. They're going to try and rob from you. They're going to try and steal from you. They're going to try and be underhanded. As much as carriers talk about how bad brokers are, carriers are just as bad. Make no mistake about it. There are bad brokers. There are bad carriers, too. 
Okay? And there are some bad shippers. If you stay in this game long enough, you will find that out. So don't let carriers go to paint the picture of it's one-sided where only the brokers and the dispatchers are bad in this business because they're not. Carriers are just as bad. Okay? And that's a perfect example of, of what we're dealing with now with one, of, with one of the carriers that we have. So, but but this is but, you know, but this is the game you're playing. This is the game you're in, you know. And I'm not saying that that it's not a good game because it is. And you can get in this game, you can win big, but you got to be. But, but it's like playing football. It's a great game. Everybody has fun. You can, if you're good at it, you make a lot of money at it. But you can also take some hits and get hurt, and you know, and there's some stuff that can cause you some damage. But that's the game we're in. Okay. All right. Let's get back on track. Okay. Um, as we remember, those are the agreements that we have, but our agreements and everything is here to help you all build your book of business. And, again, a book of business is just a term for your clientele. And if you want to have a concrete evidence of your book of business, get yourself a decent TMS system. Uh, we use the CN TMS. It's only $49 a month. You know, it's a good system. You know, it, it, it does a lot. It does more than just hold our clientele, it does our financials. We can do we can track we can track all the carriers. We can put in we can um um, um we have it where we can um we can up we have a list of all our customers, all our shippers. As you can see here. You know, so we have a list of shippers that we're that we're signed up with, um and stuff like that. And as you see we have a few shippers that we are signed up with that supplies us with some direct freight. Some of them are not active, some are active. Okay, um, and some are seasonal. Okay, but you know you uh, what you have all this here. You have when you keep track of your loads. Uh, you can do the loads and stuff that you've done um, during the time you've been in business. And these are all the loads and stuff. It shows you the loads that you that that you've done and you know everything that you need. You know it, it shows you all of that. So you know you can do a lot of stuff. You go in here. You can search. By you put up the search criteria and just click on one of them, it pulls it up, tells you about that, you know, about um, that carrier, pulls them up, tells you, shows you all their inspections that they've had, tells you if the insurance is up to date. It, you know, you can run your insurance checks, you can run your your inspection checks to see if they had any bad reports. All this is done right through your TMS system. So get yourself a good TMS system, okay? And a SIN is probably the best one out there. I mean, I vouch for them. I like the SN. Um, you don't have to be a broker to get a TMS system. You can be a dispatcher and get a TMS system. Okay? Uh, just get your TMS system. It's $49 a month. $49 a month. Not bad for what it does. Okay? But um, our new forms and stuff, they're formatted so that you all can actually promote and build your own book of business. Okay, so that's what because let's make that's why we're here. We're here to help you build your book of business. Okay? Um let's go into some other stuff that we've got that we're gonna be doing in the future. Now, the reason why we want to talk about you all building your own book of business and starting your own company. Because some of you are gonna go on to become brokers. Uh, some of you are going to go on to become dispatching firms. Some of you are going to go on to become freight for them. Whichever one you decide you're going to go on to become, we want you all to keep in mind that here is what we have coming up in the future. We have I had a meeting I had a I had a meeting yesterday with the VA and with the Board of Governors here here in Florida. No, we're right here in the capital in Tallahassee. That's one of the nice things about being in Tallahassee. I can I can schedule meetings with you know all the state people and and get stuff done quickly. Um, at a meeting with the board of, at the board of governors, you know the board of governors. That's just a fancy term that they use. It doesn't really mean anything. I didn't go to sit before some governors said that. It's just a fancy term that they use for the people that control the educational stuff here in the state. That's all that is. So in other words, I went down to the education building. Okay, I, I had a meeting at, at the education building, and it was before a group called the board of the board of governors. But they control all the licensing, the exemptions and the accreditations for all of the vocational, any type of educational uh, institution that is going to be receiving government funds, okay? 
And and I say that because that is huge because that is clearing the way for us to do this. All right. This is our executive summary for our what we're going to be having that what we're going to be putting on here in the near future. Uh, we're we're shooting for March to start our first one, and the reason why I wanted to bring this up to you all because each of you all that are taking this course, you're taking this course because you're, you're taking this consult because you all want to start your own businesses, you want to become your own freight agents, your freight brokers, or dispatch runners, whatever the case may be. We are putting together um, a program to where we will have freight broker agent training certification and a career fair. Each career fair will last one week long. Okay, each career fair consists of a week of training. At the end of each training, each day, each of the students will have to take a a, a quiz that night, and they have to pass that quiz to continue to the next stage. At the end of the week of training, there is a final exam, and at the final after the final exam, the last day there is a a, a recruitment style um, interviews where all of the instructors have to be owners of either a free brokerage firm or owners of a dispatch firm, okay? Because one of the requirements for being an instructor is you have to agree to make an offer to at least where every graduate is going to get offers from the instructors who gave the course, okay? So that's how we have the guaranteed career placement. Every graduate gets at least one contract offer from one of the five instructors who are giving the course. The instructors will be paid twenty-five thousand dollars for each week of the seminar, for each seminar, for each career fair. It's basically two weeks of work. The instructors and we all go down the first week, and they're held in different cities. We're starting out here in Florida. And it's starting out in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Tallahassee. These are the areas that we're going to start out here in Florida. Okay? And they're a week-long sessions. The instructors, we go down a week before. So we're down there for two weeks. The first week, we're just setting up, make sure everything is, is set up um, correctly. We're going through our dry runs, our practice runs of the course studies and stuff like that. Um, each instructor is going to, let me pull this up for you. I think this is it. No, that's the same one. My bad. Let me find the right one. Each instructor will have at least one day that they will be responsible for for training. And this is the course schedule. And this is the course schedule. Um, the tuition for this is $7,500. Okay, that's the, that's the tuition. It is paid for by the state. It is paid for by the veterans, by the VA. The VA is the same group that paid for my truck, just they do with trucking school. VA has something called uh, the, the, uh, the, the Veterans Boat Rehab Program, and this is the program that, we're, that, that we have been approved for. It is the Veterans Boat Rehab Program, where the, where the federal government and the, and the VA will pay for any veteran that wants to become a freight broker or a truck driver, whatever case may be, they have different ones. The one that we're doing is established for any any veteran that wants to become a freight broker or a dispatcher or a freight agent. They will send them to our course, and the federal government will pay for it. They'll pay these seventy-five dollars one shot. They just pay for it. The minimum class size is forty-five. The max size is one hundred. So you can do the math on that: five hundred dollars times forty-five students. That's 350, 300. Calvin. It's going to cost $50,000 air travel. The whole expenses, the whole week that they're there, it includes their meals, three meals that they're there. It includes Uber and Lyft rides while they're there. It includes pretty much everything that they need. And include their travel back. Okay? So everything is paid for when they come on this, you know, uh, uh, when they come on this, um, uh, this career fair. 
and, and all the graduates have guaranteed career placement, and the federal government and the state, and the state pays for it. It is it is open to veterans. It is open to anyone that is on federal aid, food stamps, low income housing, HUD, Section Eight, child support, anything that with Medicaid. If you get federal aid, you qualify for this, and the state will pay for it, and the VA will pay for it for, for, for any veteran that wants to take this program. Quick question, Calvin. Yeah. Does this fall under the WIAO program? Yeah. Basically, some people call it WAO. Some some states call it the... Um, WIA. Yeah, WIA. Some call it... Um, What's it? What it is? Uh, I don't know. It's called here in Florida. It's called the, the WIA, and it's called the um, the uh, Career Source. It's under the Career Source One program. Okay, but these are federally funded programs, and we had to go through an extensive. It took us about a year to get approved for this. We had to go through an extensive background. They they have been reviewing our courses. They have been reviewing our video feeds. They have been reviewing our documents and how we're set up in our program. They've been reviewing this. So this is this is why I, I kind of laugh when I hear people say, oh, our BBS is a scam. Okay, but the federal government do, don't think so. No. So you, so you tell me. But we just got our approval, and we're going to be looking for trainers. We're starting out here in Florida, but after that, we're going to be branching out to the other areas of the country. So there's going to be plenty of room for trainers to come in with us and have this type and put on these type of courses. And it's basically, you know, two weeks of work, twenty-five grand. I mean, if you do four th four of these per year, that's eight weeks of work. That's a hundred thousand dollars for each instructor. Now. This should be an incentive for you all to grasp what it is we're doing. This should be an incentive for you all to kind of move towards that area of starting your own brokerage firm, starting your own dispatching firm, you know, getting started, getting up and running, and becoming an owner of a freight brokerage firm, dispatching firm, freight forwarder firm, because this is what's going to be available to you. Okay. Um, we're looking to we're looking to start our first one. We're looking to have our first one in Miami. This area where we're going to be kicking it off. It's going to be in Miami. And if you go to our website, uh, you'll see it on our website at the RBBS uh, at LLC dot org, and you'll see this on our website. And you can click on it, and it'll take you to little things about Miami, about each area that we're going to be ha that we're going to be having stuff in and stuff like that, as you can see here. So. Uh, get ready. We have a lot of we have a lot of big things coming this year. A lot of big things coming this year, and those people who are involved with us are gonna be making some big moves. Okay. So, but anyway, we have that coming up. That's one of the other things that we have that are coming up this year that we just got approved for. We're looking to make this happen as quick as possible and get this and get this started. It, it will require some, some you know some travel. But hey, you know, we're gonna be in areas where you're gonna have time to spend with your family and stuff. Cause, Cause really, your first week there is kind of like a vacation. Really, I mean, you're gonna be spending a couple of hours a day with us, you know, uh, preparing for your courses and preparing for the, you know, your classes and stuff. But if you really don't start doing anything until your second week, that's the week okay, Calvin, I got another question. Yeah. What you're talking about, if 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 I'm in that program, that wouldn't benefit me, right? Being that I'm already under you. What do you mean it wouldn't benefit you? If yes. If, if you, you mean if you take this course? Right. I'm not, I'm not showing you this so you can take this course. No, I'm showing you this so you can become one of the instructors. Okay. 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 Every every one of you right now is on your way to running this business. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping your goal is not to just go work for someone, but to start your own firm. Okay. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because we're right. in this to show you on how to become independent. And this is just another way to help y'all be more independent. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I get it. I understand exactly what you're saying. All right, great. Yeah, this is just one of the the opportunities that we are putting together that's going to be available to you all when you decide, when you step out and you start your own firm. Because one of the qualifications of being an instructor is you have to be the owner of your own firm. Someone's mic is still open. Uh, you have to be an instructor, uh, but one of the qualifications to be an instructor is you have to own your own brokerage firm or you have to be a partner on the brokerage firm or you have to own or be a partner in a dispatching firm or a freight forwarding firm. Okay? Well, in other words, you have to have the authority to hire someone. Okay. Okay. I get what you're saying now. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, you're going to have to have the authority to make someone a contract offer. Okay? Because the way we build this is it's, it's, a, it's a job and career fair with guaranteed career placement. And by having each of the instructors owners of their own firms, that's how we guarantee the career placement for the graduates. Okay? All right. Um, but if you all want to see more of this, go to, our, go, go to the RBBS Logistics Learning Center. It is... No, I see it back. You go to this page here. You go to the RBBS Logistics, the RBBS LLC dot org, and it's featured here. And go to Career Fairs, and there it is, right there. And it has the the locations of where we're going to be starting up at. Um, you know, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Tallahassee. That's we're starting here in Florida, but very soon after that, we're going to be branching out to the you know uh, Georgia, Atlanta, you know areas like that, um, you know California, Vegas, Virginia, New York. You know, so we're going to be we're trying to get all of the we're trying to hit spots where people will want to come. Because let's face it, if you're there for a for a career fair. You still want to have to be able to be able to go out, enjoy yourself, and kind of take in the sights. So we're picking all the areas that where people are, are going to want to come to and be a part of. Because the whole point is to get as you know as close to that 100 max students for each course, for each career fair as we can. Because the bigger it is, of course, the more money there is. But on the minimum side of it. Four to five students. Each instructor is guaranteed twenty-five grand. And then, as we get bigger class sizes, the instructors get bigger bonuses on top of the guaranteed twenty-five grand. Okay. All right. But that should be an incentive. That's one of the other things that we are uh, we are putting together for um, the future, um, the near future. I'm talking in the next couple of months. So we're on that track. All right, let's get into some, um, 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 at this point, we are going to stop the recording, and we're going to continue on because we no longer broadcast our recordings to everyone now. <laughs> and I hate that, but, you know, you know, that's just how it is. You know, that's, 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 that's how we're living right now. Um, you know, we have, some, we have people out there who, who are intent on just, you know, causing trouble for us, and, you know, but... It is what it is. We don't stoop to the level. We just keep doing what we're doing and move right along, and we do what we got to do. All right. So the recording is going to stop, and we're going to go ahead and go into some of the other areas here. And I'm, actually what I'm doing is I'm breaking the recording, and then I'm going to restart the recording so, um, so it breaks up. So let me break off this part. Um, for those of you who are not um, who are going to be viewing this and you're not, in our, uh, if you're not enrolled with us, if you want to see our future recordings and things like this, you're gonna have to be enrolled. And I and I apologize for it, but uh, that's just how it. All right, welcome back to those people who um, were not a part of our group because we just got through talking about 
the auto hall flows and a lot of great things that will be coming up for those who are involved with us. Um, we've just turned our recorder back on because we don't want to show you all everything nowadays because we have some leaks out there. But we're going to allow you all to, to tune back into our regular low training. And here we, here we go. All right. If you want to have access to our complete training, um, video training, um, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to enroll. I, I apologize. But because of some of the, some of things that are going on and, and the ethics of other people, you know, it's, that's just how it is. And, and we do apologize because I know a lot of people out there like what we're doing, and a lot of people have expressed to us that they learn a lot from our free videos. But, you know, life is life, and, re and reality dictates on what we can and, and what we have to do, all right? But let's go on. Let's show you what we can show you. All right. On the load boards for our new people. All right, when you come to the load board, when you come to 123 load board and truckers pad, you're going to see this setup right here. You're going to say load search. You're going to say truck locator. You're going to have load availability on stuff. So the thing you want to um, look at first, one of the first things you want to do is you want to go to the truck locator. Because when you go to the truck locator, here's what's going to happen. Because if we've got loads that are loaded up, okay, if we have loads that we have loaded up uh, on here, uh, this thing's running slow today, running a slow today. And we use this in our loads in every morning to one, two, three, and truck will pass. And they put all the loads on here. And it'll pull up here in a second here. So there we go. It pulls up all the loads that we have posted onto the log board. Okay? And when it pulls up those loads, there are those loads right there. All those loads are right there. Okay? Right here we have 42 loads on this load board. Okay? These are all our loads. Now, when you're coming on to this load board, if, if you have your speaker open, please mute your mic. Whoever has their speaker open, thank you. Um, when you're coming on to this load board, you see our loads. If you just click on one of our loads, you notice what happens over, over here to the right, it pulls up a little shaded area with all these little trucks on it. These are trucks that are in within a 75-mile radius of our load. Okay? All these loads right here are flatbed loads. So these are all flatbed trucks. If these were reefer loads, these would all be reefer trucks. If these were dry van loads, these would all be dry van trucks. But all these trucks are flatbed trucks, or these are flatbed loads. So the trucks are going to match the load. They're only going to show you trucks that match the load. Okay? And they're showing you trucks that are within the 75-mile radius. You can increase the radius if you want to for, you know, however many miles you want to increase it to by going down here and changing it right there. As you can see here, you can click on it, and it'll tell you you can increase it from 75, you can increase it up to, but down to 50, down to 125, however you want to, just whatever you want to want to increase your radius to. You can also click where it says exact match, and only you pick um, trucks that are an exact match for your load. Or you can click a partial match, and then kind of throw in some other trucks there too, but you don't want to do that. All right. So right now, for this one load, this load that is in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and is going to North Aurora, Illinois, flatbed load. For that load, it's going 566 miles. For that load, we have how many trucks that are matching that load? Looks like we have 11 exact matches. You have 11 trucks. Now, you notice here, when you put your thing on one of these trucks and you click it, it pulls up. There you go. It pulls up the carrier's number, the carrier's name, and it's a flatbed truck. All you've got to do is call that carrier. Now, eight times out of ten, is, is that number is going to the truck driver. Sometimes it's going to their dispatcher. If they have a dispatcher, it goes to their dispatcher. Okay? But all of these trucks are owner-operated trucks. Some owner operators have their own dispatchers that they've hired, so their number, that number may be going to the dispatcher, but most of the time it's going to the truck driver himself, the guy that's, that's in that truck, all right? So it pulls up Richie all day. You're going to call Richie up and you'll say, hey, Richie, I see you have a, your truck is in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. We happen to have a, a flatbed load there that's leaving out on today or tomorrow, whatever the case may be, and it's going to North Aurora, um, Illinois. It's going 566 miles. It is paying such and such and such. And the way you find out how much it pays is you're going to go because this, this is the load list we send you all every morning. 
that low list we see y'all every morning that has all those flat day lows on it, that's the low list. So you pull up that low list while you have that open. And while you have that open, if you pull up that low list, you will have it in the background. I got so much stuff open here. There we go. And there's the low list right there. Okay, this is the low list. This is the low list right here. All right. And see, there it is right there. Muscle Shoals, Alabama, to north of rural Illinois, 566 miles. It's paying $1,250. They get 85% of that. And that one requires a regular six-foot tarp because why? There's no notes beside it. If there's nothing out beside it, it requires regular tarp, which is six-foot tarp, and it is 48,000 pounds. Why? Because they're all 48,000 pounds. And it's lumber because they're, well, they're all lumber unless it says something else. All right. So you already know this. So when you call up Mr. Driver, here we go. When you call up Mr. Driver, you say to him, yeah, that load is paying $1,250. It's going 566 miles. It's 48,000 pounds of lumber, and it's going to such and such and such in Aurora, Illinois. Is that a load you think you might want? Now, that it doesn't matter what that driver says. If he says yes, no, maybe so, or you go to blank, 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 it don't matter. Whatever he says, if he says yes, then great. Go ahead, get on the phone, call us up. Because y'all used to call to the shipper. Now you can't call the shipper no more. You call us, let us know that you have that load. God wants that load. Give us the particulars. We'll get on the phone with the shipper. We'll get that load booked for you. All right? If he says no, I don't want that load, it ain't paying enough, it's going the wrong way, or whatever the case may be, then you're going to respond by no problem. Look, here's what I do, Richie. Okay? We're a large dispatching firm. And our job is to find you the load that's paying what you need to move your truck. Because we understand not every carrier can move their truck for the same price as anyone else can. If you tell me you only want a load that's paying 225 per mile or 250 per mile, that's the only type of load I'm going to look for. And I'm not going to call you with anything less than 250 per mile. Would that work for you? Now, how many how many drivers are going to say no to that? You give them just what he you give them what he wants. Or another way you could approach is this: when he says no, you you might want to respond to him. How much money do you need to move your truck? That's the easy way. To, uh, now I'm showing y'all two different sales methods. One is a more, you have to be more of a salesperson, which, is, which was the first method. You have to be able to, you're, you're, you're convincing, you lower the, the tone of your voice, you soften your voice, you're making him listen more. You, you, it's kind of like a form of mind control. I, 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 and I hate to say it that way, but that's what it's like. Okay? That's, the, the, and that's what it's giving. You're using your voice to put him at ease and get him off of the defensive and, and putting that person at, at ease so they're actually pay attention to what you're saying to him. Okay? But the second way is kind of like the laziest man's way of sales. It's just, it's just a lazy form of sales. It's a question form of sales. You want to ask them a question that you already know that, that you know that, that they can only give you what? One answer. They can only give you a positive answer. So if you ask someone, how much do you need to move your truck? What is he going to tell you? I don't need nothing. I don't want nothing. He ain't going to tell you that. <laughs> you know, nine times out of ten, he's going to tell you how much money he needs to move his truck. So you're asking him a question you already kind of know the outcome to. You're leading him. So you say to him, okay, Richie, well, how much money do you need to move your truck? Ah, uh, well, you know, I need two seventy five in order to move my truck. Okay, great. So what you're telling me is that if I find you loads, and I present three loads to you, each one of them is paying two seventy five or or better, and I give you the option of three loads that's paying two dollars and seventy five cents um, per mile, chances are you're gonna take one of those loads, right? What is he gonna say to that? What is she gonna say to that? All right, so he says, okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, okay, I can work with you on that. Great, here's what I need you to do, Richard. I'm going to shoot you over my dispatch agreement. I need you to look at it, sign it, get it back to me, and I'm going to go to work for you. And I'm only going to look for loads that's paying 275 per mile or better. If I don't find a load that's paying 275, I'm just paying that, I won't call you. If I do call you, you'll know that I got a load for you that's paying 275. Bet. 
How can he say no to that? Can someone tell me how he can say no to that? You're giving him exactly what he asked for. You didn't try to lead him on anything. You asked him, what do you need to move your truck? He is telling you how to sell him. Okay? Now, when he says, okay, cool, you see him that dispatch agreement, you sign it, he sends it back to you, then you go to work. From there, now you have his legal consent. You legally now represent Richie all day because you are legally his dispatcher. You have him signed up to a dispatch agreement. You got it on paper. You got a contract. Okay? Now, you just did what? You just added a client to your book of business. You just added a carrier to your book of business. This, people, is how you build your book of business. This is how you make money. If I'm wrong, Tony, tell me I'm wrong. Because Tony's been doing this, and he's been signing up people. I get, I get, I get, um, 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 I get a bunch of um, um, dispatch agreements, you know, associated with Tony and Richard Stevens, and who else I got some stuff from? I think I got some from, from um, a couple other people, but I guarantee you this is the method that they use. Okay, because who says no to giving them what they ask for? Okay, so become a better salesperson. And and by the way, that right there is what we call the setup, the flip, and the close. Because the setup was, okay, we, you know, we called them up. And we said, you know, we've got a load that's close to you. And that was the setup. The flip is we flipped them from what? One of our contracted loads because they didn't want that. So we flipped them to a dispatch load by getting him to agree to let us go find him a load and getting that dispatch agreement signed. That's the flip. Now comes the close. The close is going and finding him a load. You go find him a load and then you close. Set up, flip, close. You master that and you'll make as much money as you want to make in this business. But you got to be able to master that. And it doesn't matter if you got a thousand loads or if you got one load. It doesn't matter if your loads that you have are paying five dollars per mile or if they're paying 50 cent a mile it doesn't matter i can take five 50 cent a mile load do the same process and still book 10 loads a day now i didn't say i was going to book those fit i didn't say i was going to book those five loads but i'm going to use those five loads as bait so i can pitch the driver and then flip him over to a dispatch and then sell him and get him to let me go to work for him and then I'm going to go find me some loads, and I'm going to book 10 loads a day. This is how you make money in this business on this side of it. And you've got to develop a process. You've got to develop something. you got to develop a way of you doing it consistently over and over and over again. And the only way you do that is by repetition, repetition, repetition. This is called becoming proficient at sales. Because this business, I said it once, I said it a thousand times. This business is about sales. Having more low boards, having more lows, having higher paying lows would not make you more money. Becoming a better salesperson will. Okay? Now, once you've done that, all you've got to do then is go back over here to home. Pop, pop, pop. Go over here to load search. Pop, pop, pop. You know he's in. You know he's in where he's where in somewhere in Alabama, right? What part of Alabama was he in? Can anybody remember? He was in. I tell you where he was at. That bad boy was in Muscle 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 Shoals, Alabama. That's where he was, right? Hey, Calvin, I got a quick question. Knock yourself out, man. Right here on uh, load number thirty-seven on the load sheet, uh, Armour, North Carolina to Apple Creek, Ohio. It says new rate, check, mill, where's the schedule? So, okay, so we got to call you and you're going to call the mill and see what the weather's like out there for that load? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's pretty much self-explanatory. That, it's going to Ohio. Down at the bottom, number 37. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at it. It's going to Ohio. It's, it's picking up in North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm saying, okay, so... 
you're going to call them try and check out the weather. That's that's what that means, or we got to call and check out the weather nah, for no, that load. You, no, you call me and say, hey, I got somebody that, that wants this load, right? Yeah. I'm going to call the, on the shipper. The shipper's going to have the, the weather update for me. And let you know if they can come and get it or not. Exactly. But see, a lot of times, man, like, okay, I get people on the phone, like, yesterday, I'm calling and calling, man, I got, uh, you know, I can get in contact with people, man, and then, you know, I get all the information that I need to get, you know, flat bed, straps, you know, tarps, all that good stuff. Get on the phone and start looking for love for them. I find something, call them back, and either I get no answer or I get a voice machine, uh, a voicemail, you know. Um, and then the... The one guy did Yeah. And, th- and that's the business. So, you know, drivers, they're going to sit and wait for you. They're going to go, if they find them alone, yeah. they're going to find them alone, and, and they're on the road. That's why this business is all about time. That's what I say. When you find that driver, you go find them, you, you, you jump on the load board, you go find them alone, you call them back with three options. Now, if he's already if he's already running, ain't no problem. You know, leave him a message. Say, hey, I'm where you at. I got some loads for you. Chances are he's gonna call you back, or if you can get in touch with him, say, "Hey, uh, you seen that load? Nah, I man, I'm already on the run now. Okay, so, so where you going? I'm going to such and such. All right, I, I'm gonna call you back. What are you gonna do? Now, if you he, get to work and start looking for a load. Exactly. If he tells you where he's going, yeah. And where you going? I'm going to uh, Mobile, Alabama. Okay. And what time is your drop there? I'm gonna drop it about seven o'clock in the morning. All right, cool. I'm gonna call you back. Okay, well, see, the thing, the thing about it is I done done all of that, Calvin. I done done all of that. And and what I'm starting to hear now is that, like, drivers, uh, I, you know, they see my number, and they say California, they don't want to mess with me. You know what I mean? I done had guys that call me back and was like, hey, who is this? You know, and I, you know, spell on them. Yeah, man, you know, this is Boopty Wop with RBS, you know what I'm saying? And right away they like, okay, well, uh, you out of California, huh? Well... <coughs> Area code. Oh man, I'm cool. You know, so I get to start Send them a text message. Send them a message. Too, and then even look, 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 Sean, Sean. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. Now, now, don't take this the wrong way. Okay, don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. You gotta learn how to soften your voice. You gotta, but you gotta learn. Hold up. This is just listen to what I'm saying. You've got to learn how to be to to animate your voice, and what I mean by animate your voice at some point in time, you a hype person. You hype, 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 hype all the time. Hype. <laughs> I've never had a conversation with you where you wasn't hype. You so hype sometimes, Sean. It scares people. I'm not gonna lie to you. You hype. You hype, but hype is not always good. Sometimes you got to be softening up your voice. You got to invite. I I do, and I do, but even even that though, Calvin, even that though, you know what I mean? They they say they answer the phone and they say, oh man, uh, you know, you calling from California? Yeah, okay, what's what's the what's the problem? Oh man, you know they listen. Oh, I'm cool, you know. But then I start hearing all kind of crazy stuff with oh no, y'all catch people too much, and um, you know they just don't want to deal with you. Sorry, sorry. What's the difference between you and Tony? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, exactly, but they deal with Tony. What's the difference between you and me? They deal with me. What's but you got more experience. You got more experience. Tony but, probably got more experience too. But 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 listen, what I'm telling you though. Listen, what I'm telling you. So it, so so if that's the case, then it behooves you to listen to what I got to tell you. So yeah, I understand. You, so when I tell you, you got to learn to soften up your voice. So just from the conversation, and it, 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 and I'm pretty sure. It's, just about now, to the people here, they agree with because they can hear it, but you can't because it's your voice. <laughs> okay, you are hype. <laughs> oh, when you say something like, "What's the problem?" <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> when you say something like, "What's the problem?" <laughs> you know, it's 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 so hype it comes across as almost confrontational. You, you I mean, you know, I, I know. You know, I want to know, you know, okay, well, what's, what's, what's but, but, why? You know, what's, what's, you know? You got to practice that. You got to practice that. You really got to, it takes practice. I don't care if it, that's why I say you got to become a better salesperson. 
it takes private. And becoming a salesperson, it has has more to do with how you're saying something than what you're saying. Okay, it really does. It has more to do with how you're saying something than what you are saying. And once you learn how to control your voice and control your voice and fluctuations and do, and listen to people and know what and know how to say something to a person on the other end at that point and know how to be how and know when to, to get more excited, when to draw back and have a more subdued voice, when to have a more welcoming voice, when to have a more forceful voice. Once you learn that, that's not hardly anybody you can't convince to do what you need them to do when, when you're talking to them. But 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 you're not going to be able to do it all the time with excitement, because I mean, let's face it, people are at different moods. You know, everybody oh, yeah. has the same mood. And a lot of these drivers, they're out there, they're frustrated, they're in the cold, they're in the snow, they got stuff going on, they have other stuff going on. They don't know if mama's running around at home. You know, they're not stuck in the head. You know, and, and you come mm-hmm. up all hype. You know, they're thinking, and this guy, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got. To, <laughs> hey, I move, I move, I move with the game, man. The game don't move slow, so know, you know. Man. I hear what you're saying, though. I know, I hear what you're saying. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. You know, you, you know. Um, just learn to become a better salesperson. I mean, get with me. You know, I mean, you call me all the time. You know, we talk. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, just. Yeah. You know, it, it, it it's all about how you present things and, and how you say, say things more so than what you're saying. What you're saying counts, but how it's delivered counts more. Okay? All right, but but we're going to work on that, though. We're going to work on that because, you know, I mean, you hype. We're going to work that. Uh, I was totally saying, I was saying the same thing. <laughs> counts is right. Uh, that's, that's Ronald Evans. Ronald Evans saying the game changes with every person you talk to. Yeah, it does. <laughs> So, so you gotta be special. <laughs> uh, thanks for the backup, there, Ronald. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but but yeah, but but you all are starting to realize that this has lot. This has a lot more to do with sales than it does to do with shipping or freight or trucking or anything like that. Because and this is and this is the perfect example. Having good loads. Having you know decent loads, because I'm pretty sure you call some of those guys back, and you have some decent price, you have some decent paying loads, have some decent paying loads, but that didn't help you sell it. Then you still gotta sell it. You still gotta sell it. No matter what you do in this business, you are selling. You either gotta sell the shipper on taking a chance on you to find them them carriers, or you gotta sell the carrier on taking a chance on you to find them loads. No matter what you do in this business, you are selling. Always keep that in the back of your mind. You are always selling, okay? Because that's what, that's that is the core of this business. It is sales. And when you now 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 now, uh, Sean, the one the one thing that is gonna go in your favor, I'm gonna tell you this right now, and y'all mark my words. You are gonna be a monster on the the auto hauler. You want to know why? Because you're dealing with car sales. I know. I, I mean, well, that, that, okay, the way you explain that auto hauling right there, I mean, I've done that. That Yeah. You're going to be able to. I played that out. I've done, hang on, I, I knock them down all day long. Not you knock them back. back. On auto hauling because car sales are always hype. <laughs> yeah. And y'all gonna get along just great. <laughs> y'all gonna get along just great. <laughs> Trust me on that. So, 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 don't get too discouraged because when you on the holiday, you, know. you probably you probably gonna be leading the game. Cause look, car salesmen get hype all the time. A lot of them are hype because they're on some artificial yeah. type of stimulus. But you know, but they. Are hype. <laughs> No, it's it's the money, it's the money in the game that keep me hype. <laughs> but no, that's just how it is, man. But, you know, I, but yeah. See, and, and and that's what I mean. See, a lot of times when mm-hmm. you get that hypeness coming from you, and from a truck driver standpoint, from a from an own operator standpoint, right? You're coming, you're coming at him so hype, so in his mind, he's thinking. Man, this man, this this dog on broken. This dog on this He's sitting back there at home in the room, and he all hype because he's making money. I'm out here on this road, and I ain't you see what I'm saying? 
That's why they said, nah, man, you out of California. Nah, man, you are just, nah, man, you, put, you charge too much. Now, they already, get, they already got it stuck in their head because of how you're coming at it, because of the hype. Yeah, no, I, I keep that. They, I try to keep that thought away from home, away from them. I try not to let them, you know what I mean, even think that way that I'm at the house. You know what I mean? My whole thing is I play the role like I'm in the office away from the home. You know, I don't want them to think I'm at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Chantel said, meet them where they are. Exactly. You know, now, now if you don't know what that means. That has a lot of that has a lot of hidden meaning. You gotta meet them where they are. Like I said, she said match their crazy. match their crazy. <laughs> You're exactly right. But there's a there's a line though. There's a line. Match their crazy. Yeah, but 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 that's exactly right. And you have to when you're talking to a lot of these short drivers, talk to a lot of these carriers. You got to come at them humble, because let's face it, they all have the, they all have the, they all have this, this view of us as sitting back, making a lot of money, not taking any risks, and we're just sitting back at home behind a computer screen, and we all, and they think we all making three, four, five, ten thousand dollars a week. Right. That's 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 their mentality. Yeah, it is because I done ran into some people on Facebook. That's that first thing that come out of their mouth. Everybody wants to know if you're a broker or a dispatcher, uh, you know, and if you're a, a dispatcher or an agent, the first thing they're going to say, oh, you working from home. No, I'm not working from home. No. Oh, you at Starbucks. No, I'm not at Starbucks. <laughs> but, yeah. here's my, but, see, here's, but here's my thing, though. When, 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 when I get that, I, I, I just have to say, I said, yeah, I work from home. You know, but I was also, a, but I was also an owner operator. An owner operator, yeah, yeah, and I let them know that too. Yeah, I've been behind the wheel. I've been out there. I know how it is. And, you know, but I tell them straight up too from the gate, like you said. And, 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 and so look, I understand. I understand that every owner operator has a certain amount of money that they need to move their truck. So regardless of how I'm doing, right, what we really should be focused right. on is is how you're doing. That driver, right? right. I, yeah, and that's what I tell them too. I tell all of them because, just like because, you said, I'm here to work. Because, because, sir, the bottom line is you need to feed your family, right? Right. You need to feed your family, but you also got to pay bills on your truck. You know, you got a truck payment, you got insurance, right. you got to pay for fuel, and we all know that cheap freight right. don't move it. Cheap freight can't move every truck. You know, we let those company drivers right. have cheap freight. You need to have freight that's gonna help you to put money in, in National Hill Bank and help you mm -hmm. pay for your truck and still put food on the table. Uh, right. Uh, for your right. All, I, all, I'm, all I'm asking you to do is give me the opportunity to help you to help you make more money. That's all I'm asking. If I can't help you make more money, if I can't help you make more money, then no harm done. But if, if, but if there's a chance that I can assist you and help you to put more money in your pocket, that's a chance you want to take, right? You see, you, you, you see what I've done. You see what we've done. This, yeah. That's how you. That's how you take a confrontational driver or a carrier. Or, but 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 you, you have to come on their level. You have to find. You have to find that thing that connects with them. And heightness doesn't always do it. Mm-hmm. You know, and despite what they're saying, you got to find a way to cut through that and let them know that, look, bottom line is you need to make money. It doesn't matter how much money right. you make. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we all know that we make money. Yes, because that's why we're in the game. Right. Said, but, but let me help you make some money, too. And if I can't yeah. help you make money, then we don't do business. Yeah. Become a better salesperson. That's all I can tell you all. Work, work, work on your sales technique. Work on your human connection. Work on connecting with people. Work on learning how to, you know, to really, to really, really connect with people. And the only way you're really going to connect with people, you have to believe in what you're doing. If you don't believe in what you're doing, how are you going to convince someone else um, to believe in it? Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Chantel's right. You know, talk game needs to be on point. <laughs> You're right. You know, you, you know, uh, you know, I mean, it's all about 
it's all about being a better salesperson. It's all about knowing how to connect with people and knowing how to, you know, um, and knowing how to approach people. Okay, um, but that's how you that's how you book ten loads a day. You know, you got to get in there and you got to connect with people. And you got to turn some of those people around who have a negative view of you and turn them over to the positive. And that's how you do it. Okay. All right. Now, back to when we were on this um, low board thing here. All right, you find out where this guy is um, coming from, right? Find out, find out where he's at. If he's in, well, let's say that guy was in Chapman, Alabama, whatever it's going to be. All right, then you go to the uh, low board. When you go to the low board, you go in there and you put it in. Let's put in what we Yeah, Muscle Shows, Alabama. We put that in there. All right. And let's say he's 150 mile radius. Let's say he don't know where he wants to go, but you know, let's say he wants to go. Let's say he wants to stay out of the cold. Okay, so we're gonna go into the map, and we're gonna say we're gonna say we're gonna send him over to Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. We're gonna look in um, Louisiana, Mississippi. We're gonna look in Alabama. We're gonna look in. Um, we're going to look in Arkansas, we're going to look in Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, California. We're going to look in Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Georgia. And we're going to do this. Right, we're just going to do that right there. That's what we're going to look for him, okay? Because he, he wants to stay out of that north. He wants to stay out of all that cold weather. You know, we're going to hit Florida, yeah. He wants to stay out of all this, all, all this, you know, all that deep snow. He don't want to go in none of that deep snow. All right, and let's say he is a, and he is a flatbed. All right, yeah, fine, click flatbed. Now, because he's already told you he wants two dollars and fifty cents a mile, you know he wants something that's paying more money, right? We're gonna do this so, so it shows us the highest paying rates first, and this is how you do that. You're gonna come down here. First of all, you're gonna click your pickup date. You know, say he wants to pick up on Friday. All right, pick up on Friday. Then we're going to come down here, and you're going to go to where it says more options. All right? You're going to click that more options. I think that's how you do it. Make sure I got that right. Uh, yeah. Click that more option. You're going to drop down here, and you're going to see where it says payment rates. You see that? Everybody see that? All right? You're going to click that button right there. You're going to click that button, then you're going to click search. And look what it does. It pulls up all the loads that have the rates from, you see what I'm saying? That's what it does. It's now showing you all the loads that have the rates. Now, if you want to show them in from offer from highest to lowest, you click that button right there where it says offer, and it shows you the highest rates first. Okay? Does everybody got that? All right, either or is what I am thinking. Okay, yeah, good job. All right, um, it shows you the highest rates first. So now, remember that guy said that he wanted what? $2 and so on since the mile, right? So now you're looking at these lows, right? And you're looking at it. All right, you got this one right here that is paying $2,900. It's 42,000 pounds. And it is going how many miles? For 912 miles. You think that's 2,050, 2,025 a mile? I think it is. Let's click on that bad one and find out. Let's click on the find out for sure. Look at that. That's 3,018 a mile. Is that one that'll work for him? Anybody think that's one that'll work for him? You said 250. Yeah, mm -hmm. one, that's one that's 318. Yes, sir. It's not going up in the snow. It's not going in the way of the snow or anything. It's, it's, taking him, it's, it's keeping him out of the snow, and it's paying $3.18 a mile. Now, if you work this system, if you work this system, this system will pay off for you. Will it work like this every single time? No. Will it work like this 8 out of 10 times? Yes. But you got to work the system. You can't work the system once. Ah, that junk don't work. <laughs> You ain't going to make no money that way. You got to work the system. Work the system. Work the system. Work. Now, I didn't, 
I didn't pre-do this. I didn't know that that that, that we were gonna find that load that pays that much money. I didn't know, you know, I, I, I didn't do none of that. But look what happened. So what are the odds that this just magically happened for me and it won't happen for you all? You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm trying to say? If I can do this, I know you can do it. I've just shown you that it can be done. If I can do this, and and, and you know most guys will jump on a two dollar and fifty cent uh, per mile run. You know that most flat betters will jump on that two fifty, two sixty, two seventy five. They'll jump on it. You know he's gonna jump on a three dollar and eighteen cent a mile. So when you call him back or you see him and text him, hey, I got a load for you to pay three dollars and eighteen cent a mile. You think he's gonna call you back? I think so. But it ain't going to happen if you don't do what? Work the system. It's not going to happen unless you work the system. This is not get rich quick. This is a real opportunity, but it requires real work. And if you thought you was going to jump in this and not do no work, you might as well quit and go home now. This is real work, but it will pay you real money. I get, I know it pays real money. I jumped into this game, and after about two months, I was doing eight to ten loads per day. I thought I was doing something. <laughs> I'm like, is this real? Is this really this kind of money in this business? And not only are you making money, but you're helping people, truck drivers make money. When I was driving trucks, I wasn't finding loads like this. I was like, when I learned how to work the load board and, and, and book my own load, then I began to find loads like this. But when I first started driving trucks, no. I was running loads of, you know, a dollar, dollar fifty a mile. You know? When I was with Covenant, I was only getting paid fifty, six cents a mile, but I was in a truck. But I didn't have no expenses. I'm getting paid pretty good. Pretty good. But when I jumped out there in my first on operator gig, Went out and bought me a truck and started running my, but see, my truck was pretty much paid for when I bought it. So, so that, so, like I said, guys need to figure out how to buy their trucks because some guys buy their trucks and they buy it the smart way and they only have a $300, $400, $500 a month payment. Some guys buy their trucks and they got a six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollar $900 a week payment. The guy that was smart in buying a truck by going out there and getting him a business loan on a revolving line of credit, get him a revolving line of credit, Two hundred, two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars revolving line of credit. Take a hundred thousand dollars, go out and buy him a brand new Volvo. But it, because he's only paying on the interest on that revolving debt, he's only paying three hundred and eighty-six dollars per month. He can afford to rent his truck on a dollar fifty a mile and still break home three thousand dollars a week. Versus the guy that goes out and grab one of these lease programs, he got a seven hundred and fifty dollars a week payment. He has to have two dollars and seventy-five to the mile. You understand what I'm saying? So a lot of times when these drivers are, are mad at you for the loads or the or for the rates that are being on the out there, there's nothing wrong with the rates. What is wrong is how they bought their truck. But a lot of them don't want to admit that. A lot of them don't want to admit that the fault lies with them. If you was not savvy enough to work a deal to where you got your truck at a low enough price so you can afford to run the loads that are presented versus now you got you can only take the higher paying load because you went and let someone put you in a deal where you paying seven hundred dollars a week or nine hundred dollars a week for a truck and your fuel is two dollars and seventy two cents per mile uh it's two dollars and seventy two cents per gallon. No, you can't make money. Yeah, you gotta have the highest paying loads going. But that's your fault. And 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 ninety percent of the owner operators they're not gonna admit that. They're not gonna admit that they made a bad move. It's why they gotta have high pay loads. But you need to understand that. You need to understand that this is what you're dealing with. You need to understand that it's not your fault that the rate that these drivers won't take loads because of race low. It's their fault because they chose those ridiculous deals that they got on their truck. Okay? And now it's your job to find a way to help them make money. So you got to find a way to convey to them, say, look, I'm here to help you. 
I didn't I didn't have any part in you buying your truck. You know, you, now you don't want to say that to him, but in the back of your mind, this this is what you got to be thinking. You did not did have any part in helping him buy his truck. He did not you did not give him advice on how to purchase his truck at a lower rate or find a a better method of getting his truck so he can actually afford to run his truck and make a lot of money without having to worry about how high the rates are. But you got to find a way to convince him, look, I'm here to help you to make money. Okay, regardless of what you have that's going on, you tell me what you need to make money. And my only job is to find that for you. Now, regardless of what you think about me or what you think about brokers or what you think about freight agents and the industry, the bottom line is you need to make some money. And that's what I'm here to do is to help you make money. So give me the opportunity to do just that. Okay? So, you know, this, this career you all have chosen is part counselor, is part salesperson, and is part logistics. But that's what it takes to be successful in this business. Become a better salesperson. I say that all the time, and I keep saying it. All right? But here it is. This is how you find those higher paying loads on one, two, three. Anybody need me to go over that again? Does anybody need me to go over that again? Anybody? Everybody? Yeah, go over it again. All right. Let's go back. Let's go back. Looking back, 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 back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Remember we were over here in truck locator? All right. We found a load. Found a guy, you know, better than the load. We went through him. We, uh, and we pitched him, and he said, no, I don't want the load. You know, it's going the wrong way. It's going up there. In the, it's going up there in Illinois. It's too cold up there in Illinois. I don't want to go up there in Illinois. That, all that snow. I don't like driving through. I'm an Alabama boy. You know, all that type of stuff. All right, so he said, I'm an Alabama boy. I don't want to go up there. All right, great. All right. <laughs> he said, and, and another thing, it ain't paying enough. Y'all always trying to get us to take these low-paying freight, and y'all making all the money, and I ain't making no money. I'm out here starving. I don't know if my woman at home, I don't know who she, who she messing around with. He got all kind of problems. All right, so you say to him, look, I understand. All right, my job is to find you the load that's paying the amount of money you need to move your truck. What do you need to move your truck, Mr. CP Enterprises or who we got here, Mr. ENR Trucking? What do you need to move your truck? Well, I need $2.50 to move my truck per mile. Okay, great. And I don't want to go in no cold weather. Okay, I understand. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for you loads. I'm only going to look for you loads that's paying more than $2.50 um, per mile and loads that are going out west, midwest, keep you out of the cold. If I don't find anything that's paying two dollars and fifty cents a mile or more, and can keep you out west, I won't call you. If I do, I'm gonna call you, but I'm only gonna call you with the loads that's paying two fifty a mile and keep you out, keep you in the south and out west and midwest. Is that fair enough? Yeah, great. Let me shoot you over my dispatch agreement so that I have the authority to go look for you. I'm going to send you my dispatch agreement. You look over it, fill it out, sign it, send it back. Basically says that if I find your load and you like it, you accept it, you pay me 10% of the, you pay me 10% of the load fee when you get paid. Okay? It's not a long-term um, contract. You can, you know, stop dealing with me at any time. All they're saying is that you are allowing me to work for you and find you the loads that you want. Deal? Deal. All right, great. Now, you've got to do that by the body. Now you go find them a load. Right, go back to the home page. Go back go to where's the home. Go to where's the load search. Go to load search. All right, you know where he's at. You put in where he's at. He's in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. All right, you got that. Everybody with me? He's in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. You know he wants to stay out of the cold, so you go over here, you click up here where it says map. You see where it says map and state. Don't don't type anything in there. Just click where it says map and state, and you just start clicking. All the areas that keep him in the out of the cold weather. That's all you do. You just click on all these areas that keep him out of the cold weather. You know, 
trying to keep him over here in Florida, Georgia, you know, keep 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 him, you know, somewhere in the south and midwest, you know what I mean? All right, there we go. So now you got him. You, know, you want to keep that? You want to keep that wine on me? Yep. All right. So now th there you go. All right. So now you. So now you know all these are like the non-cold, cold, cold weather states. All right. You know he's a flatbed. Go out here. You click flatbed. All right. Now you wanna. You wanna wanna. And you wanna. He wants to leave on Friday. You want. You wanna pick up on Friday. You know, on tomorrow. So now, you gotta. Now because he's told you he wants. Two dollars and fifty cents per mile or better. You only want you don't want to waste your time looking at loads that's not paying. You don't waste your time looking at loads that don't have no rate out beside. You don't want to because remember you ain't got the time to be calling these brokers and trying to find that out because he's sitting there waiting on the load, right? Right. You want to be quick about it. You want to be quick about it. So to be quick about it, you run down here because at the bottom you click where it says more options. You click that more option, right? You go over here where it says payment rates, right down here. Everybody see that? You click that little button where it says on payment rates, you click search. Then you go over here, it's only now it's only showing you the loads that's got the rates on it. But you want to see the highest rates first. You want to see the highest rates and go down from there because you ain't got time to be trying to look and find the highest rate. You're gonna go here where it says offer. All the way over to the right, just below where it says check, click the offer button, and it's gonna pull up the highest rates first. And route the rip, you got two loads. One paying twenty nine hundred, one paying twenty eight hundred, and the next one is paying eighteen hundred. And, uh, and these are flat bed loads, forty two thousand pounds. You know what he needs to pay, what else that? You want to click to see what the rate is on that? All you gotta do is just click it, and that one tells you right there. It's calculated. It's twenty nine hundred dollars is what it's paying. It's nine hundred twelve miles. It's three dollars and eighteen cent a mile. That falls right in, way above what he wanted. That's a slam dunk. Then you got another one right underneath that that you can show it also to $2,800. That's paying $2.55 a mile. That's your option. That's, you got one, two options now that you can show them. You got another one right underneath that that's saying $1,800, but let's look at the miles. It's only 614 miles, so that's paying $2.93 a mile. That works for him too. You got him three options right off back, rip, 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 rip fast and in a hurry. So now you just put that together. You call him back and say, hey, here's what I got for you. You got three options. I got one load going here that's paying $3.18 a mile. I got another load going here paying $2.55 a mile. Another load paying two ninety three a mile. Which one do you want? What are the chances if you offer that guy three options, all of them paying more than what he told you he wanted, that he's not going to take one of those loans? Y'all understand me on that? Okay? Yeah. So, but remember. Calvin, I got a question about something. When you, on one, two, three, low boards and you pick a say you pick a load like right where we at now and you see how it say dispatch that's I'm not that's what I'm confused about because you said don't uh book a load with another dispatcher right yeah, I mean, you can book that load because look it's a dispatch but that is a look what it is it's a logistics company okay it's a broker firm a okay company. Because remember, you're not you're not getting paid you're not getting paid by the dispatcher. Okay. All right. You getting paid by the carrier. So and that dispatcher is gonna pay that carrier what fifteen hundred dollars, right? Right. Right. So your right. is coming from where? They're fifteen hundred dollars. So it don't matter what what that, what, what that person they're getting paid. That don't matter now. What I was talking about, if a dispatcher calls you up and says, "Hey, let's work together," right? I've got some um I've got some trucks and some loads when they work together. Now you're both trying to get paid from the one from, from the one cut fee. You see what I'm saying? Which means which means that carrot because see this dispatcher right here is not being paid by the carrot. That dispatcher is being paid by the broker. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it, ma'am. I get it. <laughs> to try to team up uh, with you outside of this, that means both y'all are getting money for the carry. That ain't going to work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, man. All right. 
Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I see Shad, I see Miss James and Ronnie. Y'all got your own little conversation going on back and forth, ain't you? <laughs> Y'all got a meeting with that a meeting. I hear you. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, flatbed tarps that turn into a band. Yep, that's right. All right. You should be ready to start your own watch card here pretty soon. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, and, uh, all right. Uh, uh, real quick, them trailers, them, them ain't called curtain sides. She said they called Connor Stokers. Well, it's the same thing. You, I mean, it's just a okay. call them curtain signs. Some people call them kind of like the the technical right. name for it is, is is that hard is that hard to pronounce word that, that kind of kind of stoga or whatever they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Is hard, All right. Uh, to pronounce that's the technical name for it. <laughs> Thanks to Calvin, I learned. Well, I mean, I see them all the time, and I know, you know, I know a lot of terminology and stuff, you know what I mean? I know my players is just like, okay, Connor Stover, what's that? You know, we call them curtain size out here, so I mean, everybody's different, but, you know. But, yeah. but, 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 but let's stay on track. Let's stay on track. All right, so everybody understands, everybody understands how to find the highest payload. Everybody understands how to flip a carrier from a dispatch load from a um, from a um, contract load to a dispatch load. Everybody understands how to quickly how to quickly move from the carrier saying, okay, yeah, find me a load to you going and find him a load and getting right back with him and showing him what that load is paying without actually having to call that broker. Now, all you got to do now is verify that the load is still available. Because once you get back with the carrier and the carrier says, yeah, okay, I want I want that bad boy. Bam, get on the phone with the carrier and say, hey, I got a carrier that wants that load. You already got the dispatch agreement, so you got to wait for that. All right? You say, what's the carrier? Um, look, you can go ahead and give it to him. Why? Because you got that dispatch agreement. You got it in writing. You got him on the contract. You protect it. Okay? Great. When does he want to pick it up? He wants to see if he can pick it up tomorrow. Great. Go ahead and shoot me over the what? The load confirmation. Shoot me a load and rate confirmation. Shoot it over to where? You can use you all's email address, or you can have them to fax it to you, or you can have them to dispatch it at rbbstransport.com. A lot of you are probably going to want to start using your own e email address because we're, we're gearing up to help you all build your own book of business. So start having these people to send you the uh, the agreement, the, um, 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 the confirmation sheet, and then when you get it, you can forward it over to us, or you can you can just let them know that uh, dispatch. We have a dispatching firm that handles all of our paperwork. Okay, and you can have them send it over to dispatch at rbbstransport.com if you want to. We're working on another email address that you all can use for you all things, and we think we're going to call it my dispatch. You know, uh, it's going to be such 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 at mydispatch.com. Okay, because so that kind of gives you kind of like a blanket name to where everybody thinks it's your dispatch. You, you get it? My such and such at mydispatch.com. And we're gonna and we're working on putting that together so that you all will have that and we'll be, have that for you too that we'll add to our mix. Okay, um, but does everybody get and understand how to find that load, how to put that load together, and how to make money from that load? Because if he grabs that twenty nine hundred dollar one, that's ten percent. That's two hundred ninety dollars. What's half of two hundred ninety dollars? Everybody, what's that? One hundred forty five dollars, right? Right? One forty five. One forty five. That's one forty five. You just made on a load. And you can do four of them, a, four of them a day. We do three of them a day. That's good money. We have. You do two of them a day. That's still good money. Does anybody disagree that $145 times two a day is not good money? It's even better if you do three. Outstanding if you do four or five. All right, so you're right. That's $1,599 a week. Okay, so that's what I tell you all. This business is, it's not hard if you work it. If you work it, if you work it, if you work, but you but you ain't gonna make it if you don't work it. 
You understand? I mean, you gotta work. You gotta work the process. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta go through the steps. If you just this one thing, if you just stop, stop worried about how many load bulls you got. Stop worried about how many how much the loads are paying, and you just look. I started out with just one, two, three load bulls. I didn't. I ain't look for no other load bulls. I just do one, two, three load bulls. <laughs> and, and 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 I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to keep telling people how much money I was making, but I was making a killing just on one, two, three load bulls. Why? Because I was following a system. I was doing that same system every single day, five days a week, from eight in the morning until four in the afternoon. That's called work. That's called a career. And if you thought you was going to jump into this and not work, then you're in the wrong place. It's not hard work. It's not hard work by no by no way, shape, or form. Is it hard work? But it is gonna just work. You still gotta put an effort into it. You still gotta put work into it. We can supply you with all the tools, resources, all the support. You know, I mean, I get calls from some of you all ten, twelve, two o'clock in the morning, and I pick up the phone every single time. I take about one hundred twenty calls a day. We can give y'all all the support, all y'all want. Y'all on the y'all on the chat group. Sometimes I see some. Sometimes I get on the chat group at four o'clock in the morning, and some of y'all are on there. A lot of you not, <laughs> you know, but that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> but you're right, Chantel James. You, <laughs> but you're right, you know. But we can supply you with all the support. We can supply you with all the tools. We can supply you with all the resources. But we cannot do the work for you. Okay, I can show you how to do this. All, I can, I can walk through this fifty times a day. Show you exactly how you how to do it step by step. Show you the money, but I can't make it for you. All right, somebody got a question? Got the mic on. Yeah, um, I was just wondering if um, is it like like how early in the morning can you get up and get started at this? But but know this. Uh, you could probably get up that early in the morning. I wouldn't start calling truck drivers that early in the morning because most truck drivers are getting up trying to get their truck ready. Um, they're getting fueled up. You know, they're trying to get a little breakfast in the system because they want to get on the road by 6 a.m. If, 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 if they got a load. Now, if they don't got a load as big as Sydney here, it's fine. But I'm going to tell you right now, no broker is going to no broker is gonna be open and taking calls before 7 o'clock or 8 a.m. Okay. okay. Most brokers are come in around about seven thirty, between seven thirty and nine o'clock. Okay, so seven o'clock at the earliest, really. You can you probably reach a broker at at seven AM. Very seldom will you reach one before it is. And you okay, very, so very seldom, it's very seldom will you reach a broker after five o'clock, six o'clock in the afternoon. And you're never probably gonna reach a broker on, on the weekend. So it's basically just five days a week, basically eight to five, really. Yeah, that's your active days for working the system. Now, as far as there's other ways that you can make money in the business, you can grant. Remember, because you got to promote yourself. And I'll tell you all this now. Come up with a business name. Please, 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 all of you all, come up with a business name. Think about it. Think about what you want your business name to be. Make it something kind of catchy that where people can grab onto it and it's unique and it's, and it identifies with you. Come up with a business name. Once you come up with that business name, um, I need you to shut the mic off real quick. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Once you come up with that business name, promote, 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 brand, 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 post, post, post. Post until you can't post no more. Post until Facebook block you from posting for a week. <laughs> they used to hit me all the time. I used to post so much. Facebook used to shut me down for a week. Tell me I couldn't post no more for a, for a whole week. And then they started telling me I couldn't post no more for two weeks. And then I said, well, let me not post as much. Let me limit to what I post. <laughs> you know, let me let me not post not post fifty posts a day. Let me post ten. 
a five, and then I wait an hour or two, and I post five more. And I wait an hour or two, and I post five more. <laughs> but you got to brand yourself. You got to post. But come up with your own identity. Don't always post RBBS because you're not building our – you're not here to build – our book of business, you're not here to build our brand. You're here to build your brand. We're here to help, we're here to help you build your brand. So if you all will come up with your own business name, this is the reason why we have redone our forms so that you can put your name on them and your business name so you can brand yourself and create your own identity. Okay? So come up with your own business names and start branding yourself. Okay, you can borrow our videos if you, know, if you want to. And we post some of our videos. We got some promotion. Create your own promotional videos. It, it, they're real easy to do. You know, if any, if any of you want to know how to create your own promotional videos, get in touch with me. I, I, I show you the companies that we use to make our look like the ones that we have that are animated. We pay thirty nine dollars a month to access a platform where we can create our own, your own animated. Um, the commercials, yeah. Or if you just want to, you know, make some videos, record yourself out somewhere working, or record yourself doing the business out, out in the park, or at a cafe, and you know, telling people about your business, you know, like you see me doing sometimes, you know, talk to people. I mean, I mean, learn to be outgoing and talk to people and get people interested in what you're doing and showcasing your work. This is how you this is how you create business also by attracting people to you. Put stuff on YouTube. Create your own YouTube channel. Start creating your own Facebook pages like we have with the social media load board. That's a load board, that's a, a Facebook page that we sponsor. It doesn't say RBBS, it just says the social media load board. But we sponsor it and it and it and it, and it attracts a whole bunch of People who are in the business, it attracts carriers, it attracts shippers, it attracts brokers and dispatchers. Because I'm sure you all see a lot of times when I grab stuff on the social media load board and I send it over to you all in the chat group where people are looking for loads. If you all would just go there and just hang out sometimes, you see there's a lot of people that are looking for loads. But these are things that you can do to build your brand and attract people to you. Because we're here not just to show you how to book freight. We're here to show you how to become your own business owner, how you build your own business. Okay? All right. Everybody understand how to find those loads, see how simple it is, see how easy it is. I'm going to go over one more thing here real quick. All right, let's go to um, let's go to, to, to uh, Trucker Path. All right, we're going to go to Trucker Path. I'm going to show you all something real quick. Now, let's say you go to Trucker Path and you just want to find some trucks. You ain't, you ain't want to. You, I mean, you ain't even got to look at our loads. You ain't even got to look at our loads. You just want to find trucks. You want to find different trucks. You want to find reefer trucks. You want to find because you know you get tired of looking at just the, the, the flatbed trucks. You want to find reefer trucks. You want to find all. You want to find. You want to find all kind of trucks, right? All right. Let's go here. Let's go find some trucks. You go to truck a path, sign in. All right. When we sign in, now you all see our loads here. Our loads are right here. It's always going to show our loads when you pull up. That's the first thing you're going to see. But let's say you don't want to look at that dead loads. You want to look at our loads. You want to find just some, you want to find some reefer trucks, right? Just go right here. All you got to do is go and say truck search. Click on that right there. Look at that right there. You got reefers right there? Those are all reefer trucks, baby. Those are all reefer trucks. All of them. All these are reefers. Look, look, look at all them reefers. Phone numbers. Blasey, blasey, blasey. <laughs> you know? Call them up. Pitchers. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, my name is Chantel James. You know, I'm with James Dispatching. And I noticed that you're in such and such and such. Hey, great. Let me ask you a question. How much money do you need to move your truck? Now, how many times do they get a call like that? Not, they, don't, they probably don't get calls like that. 
You call him and say, how much money do you need to move your truck? He said, well, well, why are you asking? Well, you know, I'm a dispatcher, and my job will, you know, I'm, you know, I have a large uh, dispatching firm, and all I do is I find carriers like yourself, the loads that they need for their money, and at the amount of money that they need to run their loads. So, so in other words, if you tell me that you need $2.75 to, you know, to, 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 to move the truck, that's all I'm going to look for. Now, you know you're dealing with reefers, so you probably can find loads for a lot higher than that. So if you tell me you need a load for three dollars and fifty cent, you know, to move your truck, that's all I'm gonna look for. Move your, and I won't call you unless I have a load that's paying three dollars and fifty cent on per mile or more. And I try my best to always have you at least three offers. Would that work for you? Hell yeah, that'll work for me. All right, well great. Let me shoot you over my dispatch agreement so that I have legal authority to go find you some loads, and I'll go to work for you. And if I don't find anything, no problem. If I find some stuff, you know, everybody's happy. Now, you're sitting here, you're looking at 116 reefer trucks. You mean to tell me if you call 116 doggone reefer trucks, you ain't going to get at least 10 or 15 of them that's going to say, yeah, let's go for it? Now, that's what's on here today. Later on, it might be 140. Might be seventy five. Tomorrow it might be two hundred. And I and you and y'all can't tell me how many of y'all can tell me that y'all have done this? Probably none of you. Not on a consistent basis. But this is what it's gonna take to make real money in this business. So when you all tell me so when I see stuff on the chat group and you all are talking about stuff like well, you know, I don't know if I got this. I don't know if I can do this. It's not working for me. You know, I've been I've been hitting at this for a while. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. No, you ain't. You ain't been doing it. No, you ain't. No, you've been doing it your way. You ain't been doing it the way that we've been trying to teach you to do it. Because if you had been doing it that way, you would be making money by now. Now, I don't pull, I don't pull punches. That's one thing that y'all learn. I, I don't pull punches. I give it to you straight. I give you, I give y'all all the business. Good, bad, I tell y'all the ups, the downs, I show you the pros, the cons, but also I'm going to talk straight with you. If you tell me that you're not making money and you tell me you're doing everything that we've been telling you to do, I'll call you a liar because I know better. Okay? I know better because I done done it. I do. And I, I, a while back, for some of you guys who were, who, who have been with us a while, I took, Three days off just to prove to everybody how this can be done. And in them three days, I booked 14 loads. In three days, I booked 14 loads. And that was on top of all the phone calls and everything else that I was getting in. So if you tell me you're not making money, I'll tell you you ain't working the system. Because if you work the system, you're going to make money. I'm not talking about working your system. I'm talking about working the system the way we're trying to train you to work it. But, it, but you know, human beings, you know, we get, we get in our head that our way is the best way and the only way. And, and despite following the advice of someone who's actually done it, we tend to kind of want to just, you know, yeah, that camera, he don't know what the hell he's talking about. That old man, that old man, that old man fried in the brain. That old man is stupid. <laughs> I know a better way. Okay. You know a better way. But my National Health Bank is looking good. How's yours looking? I mean, so you might want to try to start doing it my way then. I'm just being real with you. I'm not trying to, you know, talk bad about anybody or, 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 or or trying to throw shade on it, but I need you all to understand that this works, but it only works if you work it. If you don't work it, it ain't gonna work for you. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's as simple as that. Like I keep telling y'all, this is not get rich quick. This is real opportunity, but it requires real work. And if you work the system, the system will pay you. But you gotta work the system. You gotta work the system. And I'm just showing y'all two ways you can work this system 
to where you can't help but make money if you work it. Any questions? Any questions? Anybody got any questions? So when we go on to the, the truck loads for all of these um, carriers just for refrigerated trucks, right? Yeah, but you can put in what you want. That's, that's reason. If you want flatbed, you put flatbed, and it'll pull up flatbed. If you want van, oh, okay. put in van, and it'll pull up van. You know, if you want step deck, put in step deck. If you want power on, it'll pull up power on. See what I'm saying? Okay, what about hot shots? What is what is uh right. what is that? <laughs> hot shot I'm gonna tell y'all here, here, here is my take on hot shot. That's a waste of time. Hot shot is that is that is that that's that niche business. And when you get into doing the auto hauling, you have more opportunities to make money with hot shots. But unless you're doing the oh. auto hauling, I wouldn't waste my time with hot shots. So, so, so think about it. You gotta send a guy to a shipper, and, the sh and he's gonna say, this, "Well, I can only pull twenty thousand pounds. I can't take full loads. Uh, you know, I don't have this. I don't have that." Uh, and the shippers gonna look at him like, "Really? How many loads like that does the shipper normally have?" That is a niche business. If okay. If you are in that niche where you are where you are working for a hot shot driver and that guy is paying you just to buy a load just for him and you work for him only, you might be able to make a little bit of money. But as a as an independent agent, broker, or dispatcher, do not waste your time trying to make money on hot shots because you're gonna spend more time looking for loads than you are gonna in booking loads. Okay. Okay? I was just I was just wondering. I have I got a family member who owns a couple trucks, and he got hot shot vans. So I was just well, wondering. Like I got say, auto haul. I mean, hot shots can carry cars, right? Uh, it's like a van. I don't think it carry a car, no. Yeah, it's like a van. You know, they like I know you see those. Uh, yeah, those are those specialty loads, and, and the other thing about those little small loads like that, a lot of those small loads like that, companies, companies do run those loads, but they're dedicated. They, they're contracts. They have con they have they have dedicated contracts for those types of, of trucks and loads. And for guys out here who are not who are not in a contract, they're trying to find all the loose work. Ain't hey, there's not much loose work for those for those. For those small bands and low. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah. And when you got enough money in reefers and flat beds and dry beds and and power only, why would you even I mean you know, why no, would you I was just I was just wondering about it because I didn't I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. see that my, my, my family member he make pretty decent money off of it, so, you know, yeah. but, uh, so I was just wondering, so I guess. Yeah. Now, I will tell you this, if you can find, and I've been searching, I'll tell you, I've been searching, so I don't know where you can find it, if you can somehow find a platform that caters to hot shots, you might, okay. you might have yourself something. But good luck in finding it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, like you got Central Dispatch that caters to cars, right? If you can find something mm -hmm. like that that caters to hot shots, you might have something. The closest thing I've seen is, is, is U Ship, but U Ship is just a business. It's all about the lowest deal. It's not going to leave you money. It's not going to leave you room to make money. I'll do that. Hello. Oh. Uh, yeah, Facebook, uh, Chantel says Facebook has a hot shot page, so uh, y'all might want to check that out. Get with her and she can probably show you what that hot shot page is on Facebook. Uh, oh, okay. So, I mean, what does RBS stand for? RBS stands for Reputation Built by Service. 
Lamborghini, our BBS DOT number, our MT number. Our BBS um, does not have a DOT or MT number. We used to when we were a brokerage firm. We are no longer a brokerage firm. We are a, a we are a dispatch firm and a training module. Uh, program on other low boards if needed, uh, free. Uh, no, just you know, you have to find low boards and join them yourself, or or or, or get your own DOT number. We are. We are we are going to apply we are, we have applied for another DOT number but we are thinking about well actually we've already decided that we're going to change that application from um, a brokerage to just applying for it as a dispatch or or even like getting our carrier and we are working on we're looking at getting our carrier authority and just having our authority and then we can lease on trucks. And run and run and run carriers and have them to pay us twenty percent and they take eighty percent or eighty five percent we take fifteen percent you know um, but we have guys to sign on with us who have their own trucks and they can sign on to our carrier authority and just lease on with us that's what we're looking at but that's something that we're going to decide a little bit later on um, this year um, after we we got so much going on right now with the uh, with the uh, with the career fairs and the um, oh, and the um, and the auto halls, uh, a lot of stuff we're going to have to just kind of take it as it goes. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 still have access to one of those. One of those are seasonal. They're seasonal loads. Sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't. Um, you know, we don't, we, we don't get very many. We don't hardly get any. We get no one of those during the wintertime. For some reason, because we get our one loads uh, coming up, like around about spring, summer, fall, we have a, we have a bunch of one loads in, but, they, but those are seasonal loads, like anything else. Um, um, Calvin, people been referring to me, but they are owner operators with no authority, and that's what I mean. That uh, Chantel, this is why we're considering getting our carry authority. Because we've been getting that too. We've been getting a lot of people that have been reaching out to us. They're owner operators, but they don't have the authority. So we have been looking into just getting our carrier authority and just having the authority, but we don't necessarily, we're not going to buy in the trucks. But we're going to have our authority, and then we're going to let people lease on to our authority. In other words, we're going to have the authority, and when we lease on to us, we're going to have that authority attached to those trucks so is, and have the carrier carry the insurance. They carry their own insurance. They pay their own fuel and all that type of stuff. And all we're doing is they're using our authority to run loads, and we collect 20%. Uh, we collect 15 to 20%. Okay? Um, so we're seriously considering that. Seriously considering that. And that's something that you all might want to think about, too. Everybody, pay close attention. Everybody, pay close attention. All you need to get your carry authority it's around about three hundred seventy-five, four hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, you can do it. If you want to know where to go to get that, get in touch with me. I'll shoot you the the, the website to go and get that done. And you all you, you don't really need insurance. You need insurance to make it active. But here's what you but here's what you can do. Once you get your authority, you can actually put out there that you have your authority and you're looking for owner operators to lease on to your authority. And you, you're basically just leasing out your authority. That's all you're doing. They're leasing on, they're signing on with you, leasing on to, to your authority. Okay? They carry the insurance. Okay? They have the insurance. You have the authority. They're paying their own fuel. They pay their own maintenance. And they're just running loads. And for all the loads that they're running, you're getting 15 to 20 percent of the load fee, and they're taking the other 80 to 85 percent. I know some. I know some uh, people. I know some dispatching firms that have their carry authority, and they get 25 percent, and the carry gets 75 percent. I know some that carry gets 70, 73 and a quarter percent, and the and the dispatching firm gets close to. 87, almost 90%. I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. Almost almost 30%. Blah, 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 blah. I take that back. You're almost 27 to 30% of the low fee. 
And all you're doing is just holding the authority. And if you can lease on six, seven, eight, nine, ten trucks, you can, you can actually lease on as many as you want to. You can actually build it up to, you know, a couple hundred trucks, and you're just getting that percentage. So, um, yeah, like I said, just give me a call, um, and, 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 we'll, and we'll show you about how to, you know, get your, your care authority, um, so we, and we'll, we'll lead you in the right direction to get that done. But that is a good move. That is a good that is a good match if you wanted to just become a dispatching firm and having your carrier authority. That is a good, good, good business move. That's a good match. Okay? Um, you don't have to have, you know, all that other stuff you need when you're trying to get your brokerage stuff done. You can still, you know, double up on your money on the carrier side and on the dispatching side. All right. Uh, but everybody sees how you can find these loads how you can work the system here that we have, and how you can make money, okay? It's, if you just follow the steps. If you have questions about this, go back and watch this video again because, remember, this part is being recorded, okay? This part is being recorded. Uh, uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We've been doing this for a while now. We've been on here for almost two hours a day. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Last-minute questions. Anybody got a question? Last minute, anybody, anybody, anybody? Yeah, I was wondering, um, since I'm working out of Michigan, do I try to book freight out of Michigan? No, you can book freight out of anywhere in the United States, man. Oh, okay. You go on the internet. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we, gotta, we, we used to have a couple of people that were working out of the Dominican Republic. Oh, okay. No, I was just wondering because, you know, if I got contracts with trucks out of Michigan, uh, if I, you know, contacted truck drivers out of Michigan, you, you know that. No, I'm just saying that if, if, I, if I did get some drivers out of Michigan, I would have to most likely book for them out of Michigan, right? Yeah, you mean if you sign, if, you mean if you got your own carrier authority? Yeah, and you got trucks that's leaving out of Michigan, like they stay in Michigan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, and you know they. Yeah, yeah I mean, you most likely. Mean, no, I'm just saying most likely they looking for loads where they ain't got too much deadhead, right? So they don't want to go too far to pick up that load if they are already in Michigan, right? That's, that's if they're already in Michigan. But here's the here's here's thing about trucking. A truck driver could be anywhere. I mean, I was from Florida, but I hardly, but I was, I was, I did a lot of business. I was, I was in Texas. I was in New Mexico. I was in Nebraska. I was in California. I was in Nevada. I, I, I didn't hit, when I was driving, I didn't hit every state in the United States at least three times in the three years that I was driving trucks. Okay. Well, yeah, I just had, you know, under the... Yeah, because now you may have some truckers that want to stay around Michigan and want to stay local, you know, and stay close yeah. to the, you know, whatever, whatever, and that's fine, but most over-the-road truck drivers are not going to stick to just their home state. Oh, okay. They're going to get out and go make that money. They want, okay. they want, they want so. them long hauls, so they, so they take loads from wherever they're at. You know, from wherever they're at is where they take a load from. Okay. Okay? For uh, sure. Let's see, let's see here. Uh, um, I was going to call... Oh, yeah, somebody just was going to tell... Uh, I was going to call yesterday. Will you help me with that? Yes, I will. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, Chantel, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get what you want, um, getting your, um, your, um, your carrier authority, showing you how to do that. And we get to, and we get to some assistance on that. All right. Any more questions before we wrap this up? Real quick. Any more questions before we wrap this up? Anybody? Nobody has a question. Nobody has a question. Nobody has a question. All right. Great. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate everybody for tuning in to another great training session. Um, for those people who are watching this on video who are not part of our group. We apologize for not being able to show you all everything, but because of, you know, some things that are going on, we're having to limit what we show you all 
And if you want to be a part of our complete, complete um, training, if you want to get the whole story, you want to get all the training, you want to get everything, uh, give us a call. We are 866-973-6445, extension 1 or extension 2, and get signed up with us uh, and, and get enrolled. And we'll put you on the right track, showing you how to build your own book of business, showing you how to build your own company, and we'll assist you all that we can, provide you with all the tools and resources and everything you see here. We provide for all of our students. And this has been Calvin with RBBS Transport and the RBBS Logistic Learning Center. And I want to thank you all, and we'll see you all again next time. Later. Y'all have a great night.